Hi guys. Thought I would read to you from a website that I've uh, just become aware of. It's called Immigration Globalization Blogspot.com.au. And, uh, and where the fellow has done an awesome job. I just want to read to you what he wrote. Actually, on October the 25th, 2011, which is the anniversary of the murder by the Australian government of Yahweh's nephew, Michael, who was shot dead, four bullets to the back of the head, October 25th, 2003, at 6.36 p.m., the title of this is, If Hitler Won World War II, We'd Have a Better, More Just World Today. He's spent uh, years researching, reading, and has been looking at both sides of the story, and he presents what he believes to be the truth, drawing from all kinds of alternative truth sources, including David Irving and others out there who've been telling the truth for years and revealing. Anyway, this is what he has to write. Legendary US General S. Patton realized late in the war that the United States fought the wrong country. Patton felt the US should have sided with Germany to destroy Jewish Bolshevik communist USSR. This information comes from Patton's diary entries, letters he wrote to his wife, and comments he made to military officers and staff. That's why he was killed, by the way. World War II was incredibly complex. However, in the final analysis, World War II was essentially a war between two competing ideologies, nationalism versus Jewish internationalism slash globalism. Adolf Hitler and his allies fought to preserve the concept of nationalism not just for Germans, but for all peoples and the world over. Nationalism really just means the sovereignty of an ethnic people and the right of such ethnic peoples, nationalists, within their own bordered country to self-determination. What is meant by self-determination? Self-determination just means an ethnic people preserving their unique culture and heritage, pr pursuing their collective goals as a unique people. This applies to any ethnic peoples, Nigerians, Germans, Swedes, Vietnamese, Mexicans, Tibetans, etc. On the other side of World War II was Jewish Bolshevik internationalism. Today we just call this globalism. This is the Jewish worldview, or rather plan, to eventually eliminate all nations except for a Jewish homeland. In brackets, what was later to be, after World War II, the nation of Israel in 1948. Jewish internationalism slash globalism seeks to eventually merge all peoples in the world into one globalist system with a global government, global bank, global currency, etc. In short, Jewish globalism. That is the weakening and eventual elimination of all nations. Is the exact opposite of nationalism. That is a world composed of nations. The Allied powers of World War II, led by Roosevelt, Churchill, Stalin, et al., were tools of international Jewry and thus de facto fighting for the Jewish globalist worldview. After the Jewish-run Allies won World War II in 1945, international Jewish forces were then free to exercise a Jewish sphere of influence over the greater Western world and, as we see today, increasingly over the rest of the world. Alternatively, if Hitler had won World War II and then exercised a nationalist severe sphere of influence over the greater Western world, we'd have a much more just, fair and moral Western world today. The rest of the world would have similarly benefited had the Germans been victorious, since German influence would have surely spread elsewhere. Ideas such as non-usurious, that's interest, banking and strong family-oriented culture would have likely spread globally. Had Hitler won World War II, what would be different in the post-World War? Here are a few examples, and he has numbered them. Number one, no USSR. The Soviet government murdered millions of its own people during its 70-year reign. To study this topic, read the writings of Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Hitler would have liberated the USSR 
though taking large parts of its western region for Lebensraum, or rather living space. Two, no Cold War, because there would be no USSR. Three, no communist eastern slash Iron Curtain, brackets, when World War II ended, Eastern Europe fell to communism. This was part of Stalin's spoils of war, and I'm thinking in particular about the plight of Poland. Adam has been there for months, and he weeps with what has been done to Poland as a result, and the Polish people. He says of them they have no hope. They have been trampled on by every rogue dictator out there, and the buildings that Stalin constructed in Poland after the war are filled with demonic entities and it's a reminder of the ugly past and the downtroddenness of the people today who are still suffering at their hand, especially with the loss of 96 of their esteemed uh, leaders last year who were resistant to the New World Order. Kaczynski was a good man and he was resisting the IMF. Uh, of course, their... Um, health minister, who was a doctor. She refused the swine flu vaccine for Poland, the only nation in all of the world to stand up publicly and say, no way, Jose, I would not give it to my elderly mother or my young daughter, so why would I allow it for the Polish people? So they were wiped out. The idiocy of it is that they're all allowed on the one aeroplane, complete stupidity. And, uh, of course, Yahweh proved after it happened that... Uh, it was uh, murder. They weren't on the plane. There were no bodies at the site and they were taken somewhere else and murdered, probably beheaded. And the photographs would have been sent to other members of the um, anybody aspiring to be a politician to keep their mouths shut. Of course, it would have been mouth uh, back. We learned that the plane was actually Canadian, Bombardier involved. And that, of course, has the takeover of the electronics, um, a part that the patent is owned by Hillary Clinton. Good on you, Hillary. What a witch you are. Your days are numbered, as are the rest of you. Moving right along, number four, no red China and Mayo's subsequent killing of 40 to 60 million Chinese. Brackets, the USR created favorable conditions for Mayo com Mayo's communists, which ultimately led to Mayo's victory over Chiang Kai-shek's nationalists in 1945, so of no USSR, no Mayo victory. Number five, no communist North Vietnam. Both the Soviet Union and Red China aided Ho Chi Minh. Six, no communist Cambodia and Pol Pot's slaughter of two million Cambodians. Red China aided Pol Pot. Seven, no dividing Korea into North and South Korea. The Allies split Korea after World War II ended with North Korea becoming communist, another of Stalin's spoils of war. Number eight, no communist Cuba, given the previous what support would Castro have had in the 1950s. Number nine, no communism anywhere. Hitler was the world's most fervent anti-communist. Ten, liberalism and multiculturalism would, wouldn't dominate Western ethos. Brackets, both are Jewish creations, and both have always been heavily promoted and advanced by Jews. Thus, if no Jewish influence, then no liberalism and no multiculturalism, at least certainly nowhere near the degree we see today. Of course, all of these that he's talking about, Hitler realized it was all uh, Judaism, was Marxism, and of course, Stalin, and uh, they were Marxists. He was a Marxist. So, um, bottom line is, it's the Zionist Jewish influence that has always weakened the nations that they've been in. So Hitler recognized this early in the piece, wrote about it in the opening pages of Mein Kampf. You can read about it there. And he was absolutely right. So moving right along. Um, 11, no cultural Marxism and no political correctness. These are social engineering tools which came out of the Jewish think tank known as the Frankfurt School. Also, the Tavistock Institute of London is completely Zionist-dominated. Number 12, no third world immigration into Western nations. Jews wouldn't be in power positions to craft and force through liberal immigration laws. Jews are responsible for each Western nation's liberal immigration policy, as most were orchestrated by the World Jewish Con Congress. 13, no depraved filth on TV, in movies, etc., because Jews wouldn't run Hollywood. This was another reason that uh, Hitler wanted them out of Germany. He um, 
recognise that the complete degradation of the cultural life of Germany was responsible. Uh, it was it was the Jews behind it. They uh, introduced into theatre and uh, arts and literature the kind of immoral filth that uh, made the Jewish people of the time gasp, and uh, they were horrified that this was allowed and perpetuated throughout their society. Fourteen, no widespread pornography. Jewish lawyers and Jewish activists were the main challenges of anti-obscenity laws under the guise of freedom of speech. They do this the world over and is why the Western nations are in the state that they are. Number 15, there would still be prayer in public schools. Jewish lawyers were instrumental in banning prayer in public schools under the guise of so-called separation of church and state, something that appears nowhere in the US Constitution. 16, no man-hating radical feminist movement. Jews such as Betty Friedan, Sonia Pressman and Gloria Steinem, among others, were the key drivers of radical feminism. 17, no Israel and all the problems it has brought the USA and the immeasurable misery it has wrought on the Palestinians. 18, Jews would be living in Madagascar, perhaps, and would be carefully monitored. Madagascar was one place Hitler considered as a Jewish homeland. And of course, Yahweh has said all along that that's where um, Hitler fell short, is that he didn't get to do what he intended to do. Yahweh has said right from the beginning they should have been eliminated. Hitler was much kinder in his plans, of course, and indeed Madagascar was part of his plan to take them there and they would be contained, monitored, not allowed to leave. It's beyond that now. It's got to the point where they need to be, what's the word? Eliminated eliminated, wiped off the face of the earth. We are at the stage of reaping. Now... Well, it doesn't mean they're not good Jews out there. I'm talking about these Zionist bastards that have destroyed Jews. Yes, that perpetuate this uh, filth, mm, everything that's going on. They've got to down. give up Judaism because it's got to go. Now, many reading this will ask, but what about the Holocaust? Well, the Holocaust has been grossly exaggerated by organised Jewry in order to create sympathy for Jews worldwide and thus help advance the Jewish agenda. That is, people seen as victims tend to get their way. It is also used as a political weapon to justify Israel militarism against the Palestinians. Hitler's final solution, rebranded in the early 1970s as the Holocaust, was a plan to remove Jews from Europe, not to kill them. During World War II, just as the US couldn't trust Japanese Americans, thus causing FDR to round many of them up and place them in concentration camps, Hitler couldn't trust Jews since many were partisan sympathetic to the USSR and hence they aided the USSR in various subversive anti-German activities. Therefore, the Nazis rounded up Jews and placed them in concentration camps. Somewhere around one million Jews died during World War II, not six million, mostly due to disease and starvation in the final months of the war. Heavy Allied bombing of Germany and parts of German-occupied Europe destroyed many roads, railway lines and bridges, making it impossible for Germany to ag adequately supply the camps with food and medicine. Thus, the result is that many Jews died of starvation and disease. And, of course, many non-Jews also died of starvation and disease, again due to massive Allied bombing, thank you, Britain and USA, campaigns and its destruction of German transportation infrastructure, Lastly, there were no gas chambers. Much has been written about this. To study the gas chamber subject, read the research papers published by Germa Rudolph and Carlo Montagno. There were many others as well to get a broad overview of the Holocaust and read my article, What Was the Holocaust and What Actually Happened? It also should also be noted that Hitler never wanted to conquer the world. He simply wanted to safeguard Europe and the greater Western world from all manner of nefarious, nefarious Jewish influence and more broadly safeguard the world at large, specifically from one, usurious Jewish banking and two, Jewish-driven culture degradation. As previously stated, the Allied heads of state, Roosevelt, Churchill et al. were puppets of international Jewry, each sold his soul for power and prestige. Again, as earlier stated, World War II was a war between two competing ideologies, nationalism versus Jewish 
Bolshevik internationalism slash globalism. Unfortunately, international jury won. Was World War II the good war? No, it was exactly the opposite. The Allied victory marked the beginning of the end of Western civilization. And there's a photograph of Patton eventually realized that America fought the wrong nation in World War II. And of course, he was, uh, as he always said, killed for his views. He just happened to be driving an open vehicle when a plane came over and gunned it. All right, so now the, the man who owns this site, his name, all credit to him, is James Miller. He's from Los Angeles, California. Just says about himself, I'm very concerned about globalization and immigration and their negative effect on Western culture. So Joel will put the link as he uploads this. Just thought I'd read that to you because uh, it needed to be heard. And you know, those who know us, Yahweh and myself, we've been on about this now for a long time. Um, certainly the last 12 months. And, uh, yeah, so it goes hand in hand. a little bit about the theatres and so forth. That oh, yes. The children's plays they put on the Snow White. The it? piano that they had, a grand piano. Uh, look, on this site, it's the Holocaust testimonies you didn't hear, and these are interviews that were conducted. There's been 50,000 and more interviews of Holocaust survivors. The few that... Um, What's his name? Is it Spielberg or Stephen King? Who is it? One, one of the dudes. Spielberg, Spielberg yeah. I think it is. Spielberg, yeah. Spiel they they, they uh, haul out the eight that are absolute lies. One, um, one is this dude who, who, who actually became an actor as soon as he was released. Well, he's acting today as he doesn't go into detail describing Auschwitz and completely follows the party line. There's uh, two... Um, uh, the Shoah Foundation, Spielberg created. Uh, also, um, Finkelstein, Norman Finkelstein, writes, explains his reparations racket in his book, The Holocaust Industry. That's what it's all about. It's all about money. Germany being made to feel guilty, and of course the rest of the world, America sends billions every year to Israel, the rabid dog. And... Um, I posted on my site earlier an article written by, again, an American columnist, very incisive about uh, what it meant when uh, the, the dog, Ned and Ayu, uh, got out his very childish picture of a bomb. As idiotic as it was and as laughable, he uh, analysed what uh, Ned and Ayu was saying to the rest of the world. I'll read that after dinner. I'm going to let this one go up. But, uh, yeah, go to this man's site and... Uh, uh, he's done a good job putting it all together, as many have been. With that, <laughs> see you later, alligators.